I'm Michelle Hannafin. I've worked with Horizon Health. It'll be 15 years this April. Um, started out as a caregiver. I've been in healthcare since I've been 15 years old. Um, so all of you have a mirror on your spot. I would like you to open that mirror up if you could, and I need you to grab your white piece of paper I put at your spot as well. This mirror um, is a journey that Horizon Health is going on. It says, look again, see me, see us. Oftentimes we look at people because of what they look like, because of their diagnosis, because of their disability, and today I want you to learn to look past all that and still see the person. The person that um, loved to go outside and pick dandelions. The person that loved to get up early in the morning. The person that loves to work outside. All those things are still there with someone that has dementia. So we're gonna hold the mirror. I need you to hold it out in front of you that you can see your white piece of paper in front of you, okay? And what you're going to do is you're not going to be able to look down at your piece of paper. You can only use the mirror to see your paper. And you're going to follow my instructions of what you have to do, okay? So hold the mirror out. Make sure you can see your white paper and your pen. And you're not going to be able to look at your paper, just at the mirror. Okay? So make sure you can see your paper in the mirror. I need you to draw your house in the center of the paper. I want your house to have five windows. <laughs> I want your house to have a chimney at the top. And watch out, there's a bird over in the right corner of your paper that's flying over. Make sure you put that bird on there. You need to put a sidewalk out there with 12 flowers. Make sure they're tulips. Oh, I'm going too fast. And then make sure you draw a tree, an oak tree, with a squirrel at the very top eating an acorn. 12. How many of you are frustrated right now? How many of you couldn't keep up? All of you. But we all have a healthy brain in here, right? What would have made this exercise easier? Looking at the paper. What else? Slowing down. How many of you would have liked to draw whatever kind of flower you wanted? <laughs> this is what it feels like oftentimes when we give instructions to people and we aren't clear and we don't see the whole picture. So this is a reminder that you guys get to take these home today that please look again. See the person you're working with, whether they have mental illness, whether they have dementia, there's something else there and they need you to please take your time. Okay, all right. Did anybody get it all drawn? <laughs> no, all right. So what is dementia? Does anybody have any ideas what dementia is exactly? Information. Information? Inflammation. Inflammation? What else? Lack of circulation of the blood in the brain. Lack of circulation of blood in the brain. What else? Hereditary. Hereditary it can be, yep. Yeah. In the dictionary it says it's a so, slow progressive decline in mental function, including memory, thinking, judgment, and the ability to learn. That's all it is. So if you go to a doctor, that is all they're saying is you have a group of symptoms when they diagnose you with dementia. It is you have these symptoms, okay? What I need you to know, it's a structural and chemical change depending on the form of dementia you have. There are 80 to 90 different types of dementia. And you can have more than one at one time. Okay? So the structural changes with dementia happen in Alzheimer's disease. It shrinks your brain from three pounds to one pound. 
Chemical changes are in Lewy body and vascular dementia. It's all about the blood supply and the chemicals that take your memories and put them in places. It usually occurs in people older than 65, but people in their 20s do have dementia. Okay. It worsens over time. It can't be reversed, and it's just a group of symptoms. The doctor says you have these symptoms. Okay. There are four truths about all the 80 to 90 dementias. All four of them, at least two parts of the brain are dying. Of all the 80 to 90, two parts are dying at once. One is memory, and it could be memory and your ability to learn. It could be memory and your judgment. It could be memory and your vision. But two parts of the brain are dying at once. One is always memory. The next one is it's chronic. It's not going to get any better. It will only get progressive and worse. And it's terminal. It results in death. All the medications that they have out there are okay, but they're not going to cure you. They mask those symptoms we just talked about. There is no cure. Things that are most common in all the dementias over time is it affects a person's entire life. From being able to take care of yourself and being independent to the relationships you have with your family to being out in the community. It steals memories, recent ones, first. So what you just had for breakfast today, who you talked to 10 minutes ago, it steals those memories first. It steals most of your ability to use language, your ability to speak and to use some of the words that we use in our vocabulary. It steals your ability to understand what others say and mean. It steals reasoning and logic and robs you of relationships. How many of you would stick it out with your husband if he told you you were a cheater and you were uptown last night? How many of you would go ahead and stay with your spouse if they accused you of stealing or hurting them? Okay. So dementia is just a group of symptoms. And then it gets broke down into different kinds of dementia. Okay, we're going to talk about a few of those today. The first one we're going to talk about is vascular. Vascular is a blood supply problem. What kind of people have blood supply issues? What kind of diagnoses do they often have? Stroke, number one. What else? What? Smokers, Smokers yep. What else? Diabetes. 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 Heart problems, problems. yep. Yeah. Anybody have stints, pacemakers? All those have a higher chance of vascular because it's a blood supply problem. These people, once diagnosed, last three to 30 years. Three to 30. Because it's a blood supply problem again. So if the blood is making it to different parts of the brain, you're going to be OK. If not, you die quicker. They have sudden changes in spotty losses. So today, they're doing just fine, and two weeks from now, they can't get themselves dressed. They're having a lot more issues. And you as a family member go, Mom, quit it. You were just fine yesterday. You know who I am. For God's sakes, how can you forget already? You're doing this on purpose. You're doing it for attention. Anybody ever hear that? Not true. That's normal with vascular. Vascular folks are not doing it on purpose. They really just can't today. Okay? The next one is frequent urge to urinate. They have to go to the bathroom often. Again, it's a blood supply. They're not doing it for attention. They don't like to annoy, like at my houses, it's they're doing it to annoy us staff. No. Or that they forgot. They haven't forgotten. They just really have to go. Okay? They also neglect things on the left side. So they will lean to the left, oftentimes. If you put a plate of food in front of this person, you're at a restaurant, they often will eat everything on the right-hand side and not the left. If you turn the plate, they'll finish eating. They won't use their silverware if it's on the left-hand side. If you put a drink over there, they're going to have a harder time. Okay. 
They have problems recognizing what objects are for. This is where a toothbrush now becomes your hairbrush and you've got toothpaste all over in your hair. Or the razor and they start shaving their teeth. Or I planted seeds upstairs here in Piers and my ladies decided to eat them. They looked like chocolate donuts with those nice black circles. Any questions? Yeah. Are you talking about stroke here also then? Your stroke victims can fit into this, yes. Yep, they have a higher chance because of that blood supply. They can have bounce back and bad days. So again, remember, mom's doing great today. Oh my God, we went shopping, she's just herself. And two days from now, they're not very good. So they go like this, they go downhill, then they plateau for a while, then they go down again, okay? Their judgment and behavior is not the same. They may be depressed. That's really hard to have these up and down cycles. And the biggest thing is emotional energy shifts. All of a sudden they will be walking through the house and they're going, Aah! and the first thing you wanna do is, mom, what's wrong? It will make it worse. Instead you need to hand her a Kleenex and say, let's go this way, mom, let's go find a cookie because she honestly does not know why she's crying. The blood supply to that emotional area of the brain isn't there today, and she can't control those emotions. You may have anger outburst, and they're yelling at you and continue yelling at you for 20 minutes, and they have no idea why they yelled at you. They don't even remember it. Any questions on vascular? Just a brief overview. Any questions for me? Okay, next one is Lewy body. Lewy body affects your outer layer of your brain, your cortex. It's misdiagnosed as Parkinson's. Parkinson's individuals have tremors when they're sitting there. Have you ever seen somebody with Parkinson's? When you have Lewy body, you have tremors when you go to do something. That's where there's a big difference. Parkinson's folks, within their fifth to eighth year of having Parkinson's have a higher chance of getting Lewy body, but it doesn't mean they will, okay? Lewy body, the first thing you're gonna notice is a lot of falls. They fall and fall and fall, okay? They have visual hallucinations. They see animals, people, children that are not there. Hey, hey, did you see that little girl? She's outside, she's going to freeze to death. It's so cold out there. I keep getting feedback. Does it matter where I stand? Is this better? Okay. Um, they have a blank stare. So oftentimes they look right through you. They walk with a hunched posture and they shuffle their feet. Okay. They have fine motor problems, problems with feeding themselves, buttoning buttons and zippers. They also have blood pressure problems. So when they stand up, their blood pressure is very low and they'll fall. So helping these people standing up and just going, let's take a deep breath. They have nightmares at nighttime and they sleep most of the day. They fluctuate in their abilities. Today they can help you get dressed, tomorrow they can't. And when you give this group any medicine, they oftentimes will not react the same way. So if you give them a sleeping pill, they're up a lot more than they were before. You give them a behavior medication um, for anxiety, they will have worse anxiety. It doesn't work with Lewy body, but again, Lewy body is a chemical um, dementia. So it affects the chemicals in the brain, not the structure. Any questions on Lewy body? Are yes. Any, are there any treatments or things we can give people? There is no cure. They um, have, some people will go on different um, medications to mask the symptoms, but it only masks the symptoms. So you're honestly only getting worse, but because they give you a med to mask your symptoms, you don't know what stage you're at. So there's sometimes benefits that you don't have those symptoms, but then you don't know what stage you're at or how fast it's progressing, because it's still progressing. There is no stopping of the dementia progressing. It just masks the symptoms. Any other questions? Yes. So how 
how did they diagnose this versus the other ones? How did the doctor figure this out? The diagnosis? I'll talk more about that at my next training, but with the diagnosis of Lewy body, oftentimes it's doing brain scans, those kinds of things. Vascular the same way. They watch your blood supply in the brain. Alzheimer's disease, the only way they can truly diagnose is to that you pass away and they do an autopsy of your brain. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Next one is frontal temporal. It affects the front part of your brain. Your front part of your brain is your gatekeeper. It is what told you to come dressed and clothes to my class today. It's what told you to not speed on Highway 27 because it's the end of the month and the cops are looking for you. It's what told you how you're supposed to speak and when you're supposed to be silent. It is your gatekeeper. When you have this form of dementia, your gatekeeper goes bye-bye. That is where you'll have many, many people losing their motivation. I don't want to. Nope, I'm fine just sitting here by myself. And they were the active card player in the community. They lose sympathy and empathy. This is the group that swears at you. Says you're stupid. Don't you know how to cook? For God's sakes, you're trying to poison me. They're the ones yelling at the store. Oh my God, don't you know how to put my groceries in here? You know better. They shouldn't have hired you. You're ridiculous. And a lot of swear words, racial slurs are another common one. Um, sexual words. The first time you learned the S word, what did your mother tell you to do? Never say it again. And you put it in cement in your head and you kept it there. Probably since you were probably two, three years old. Now all of a sudden, your gatekeeper is gone. Where's those words going to come out? Right there, because they've been in your head the longest. You learned that word before you learned bicycle. That stays longer. They crave sweet and fatty foods. All they want to eat is dessert. All they want to do is go and steal other people's foods. They love it. That's the first thing they're usually going to eat. Okay? This group, um, this dementia usually starts in the 40s. And if you think 40s, 50s, <coughs> If they go to the doctor, it's often misdiagnosed. If I go in today, I'm 43. I go to the doctor, I say, oh my God, I'm making poor choices. I'm saying swear words. I'm doing all these things. The doctor's going to say, Michelle, you're under stress. Your job's causing you too much stress. Then if I go in again in 10 years, he's going to say menopause. And often before the person gets the diagnosis, they've had it for 10 to 15 years, especially this one. Okay. The other thing about this group is compulsive behavior. They love stuff. They don't think things through. So they're kind of your hoarders. They collect things. So think about it. This is a good one to have. You crave sweet and fatty foods. You can say what you want and you can hoard. It is a good thing. <laughs> if I get one, this is the one I want. Um, because they grab everything. They take everything. That's what they, they do. Okay. They worry about all their stuff. They'll say mean, rude, odd things to others, and they don't really care about their hygiene because they're not focused on that. They're focused that it's everybody else's fault. Okay, any questions on frontal dementia? This one is very dear to me. I, I spend a lot of time with people with frontal lobe dementia because we have a hard time in society being called names. And they really mean no harm, but we take it very personal when we get called names, okay? First time I worked in healthcare, I was 15 years old. And the first night at work, I bent over to pick a napkin up for a wonderful lady, and she told me I had the largest butt in Morrison County. <laughs> I didn't want to go back, and I'm still in healthcare. We take it personal. So the other part of this is temporal language. That is the language area of your brain. Often, this times, this group will lose that towards the end. That's where they start saying nonsense words. Ayahu, yaha, yaha. Or they will say descriptive words. Somebody that's describing coconut, you know, the chocolate coconut, dipped coconut, they will say that brown hairy ball thing. Now it makes sense, but it works. 
All right, alcohol-related dementia. Has anybody ever experienced any of those or know anything about those? That's quite common right now. Also can be caused by vitamin B1 deficiency. Okay, making sure you watch those levels. They have a problem learning new things, like most dementias. They have a problem with valued activities of people because if you drink, when was your key time to drink? When do most people go to the bar? What time? <laughs> Evening. Absolutely. It's at nighttime at 2 o'clock. So as you age, are you going to be going out at 2 a.m. partying? Probably not. And you're not going to have the same friends. You also have problems with balance and coordination, so you're falling. So it looks a little bit like Parkinson's or Lewy body. Problems with judgment, decision making, social control and behaviors. When you're at a bar scene, how do you get to act? Silly. So they're not going to be, they're going to be like those frontal temporal folks and they're probably going to say some swear words. They're probably going to wear different clothing and think they can walk around doing whatever. They also have problems with initiation and termination, starting a task. They may look at their toothbrush for 15 minutes and not know what to do with it. They also may have a plate of food like today like you guys ate and when they're done, they don't know they're done and they will keep scraping and they don't know when to stop. They also can tell stories, confabulation, whoppers of stories. One of the best stories I have is from upstairs. I had a lady come for the weekend and she looked at me and she had her coat on sitting in a wheelchair. And I said, oh my gosh, where are you going today? And she said, my husband is taking me out. And I said, oh, she was 80 some, her husband had been gone 15 years. I said, good for you. And I kept walking. She goes, wait, don't you want to know why he's coming to get me? And I said, I would love to hear. She goes, I'm pregnant. <laughs> and I said, well, congratulations. I, that's why your husband's coming to get you. And she goes, yep. I started walking away. And she goes, wait, wait, wait. Don't you want to know who the father is? <laughs> And I said, I would love to know. And she said, Mark Dayton is the father. I'm having the governor's baby. <coughs> and I said, well, congratulations. And she goes, wait, wait, wait. Don't you want to know where we're going? I said, where are you going? And she said, we're going to the Waltons to deliver the baby. Those are the stories they tell. They get TV land mixed up with their real world. And they can tell some whoppers of stories. And if you correct them, are you going to win the battle? No. Never. Never, ever. Next one we're going to talk about is Alzheimer's disease. It's still the number one diagnosed dementia out there that most people, they feel, have it. Um, early onset is happening because of genetics. Dad has it. You have a higher chance. Down syndrome and your lifestyle. Sedentary lifestyle, not doing anything, drugs, alcohol, higher chance. First place to notice it would be work. If I'm here today and I'm talking nonsense and I don't show up on time ever, I'm not getting my stuff done, do you think Bridget Brits is going to say, well, Michelle, you have dementia? Probably not. She's going to say, goodbye, not working for our company anymore. You're 43. They don't look at dementia right away. They say goodbye. Then I get home. I tell my husband I lost my job, and now I'm not picking up the kids on time. And I'm not making supper the way I should. I'm coming home at 2 in the morning. Do you think my husband's going to think I'm a good wife? No, he's going to think I'm cheating and go, bye-bye, honey. And these younger age people cannot get services. How many 43-year-olds do you see getting home care for dementia? None. And most of these people will commit suicide or have severe depression. Very scary. Late onset, usually 65 and over. New information is lost. Alzheimer's disease touches every part of your brain. It does not stop. So sometimes it looks like frontal lobe dementia. Sometimes it looks like Lewy body because it will affect the entire brain. You may misspeak. You may be more impulsive and get lost. And these people will last about 8 to 12 years. Any questions on Alzheimer's disease? Well, it's kind of subjective, isn't it? Yeah. It's, uh, it's which thing you have. Yeah, and you can actually have two at the same time going on. So you can have, you can have heart disease. And all of a sudden, you're 10 years into heart disease, 
and you're starting to have some issues and it's vascular. And as you've got vascular now and heart disease, oh my gosh, now all of a sudden you've got age coming in and you've got Alzheimer's disease and you have all three. Any other questions, comments? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It can, be, it can be a long journey, long, long journey. And it can be short. Early onset folks, um, Lyme's disease also is related with Alzheimer's disease, and those folks will not last very long. Okay? Lyme's disease and Alzheimer's disease, yes. Lyme's disease, oftentimes you will catch or get Alzheimer's disease from Lyme's disease. I'm seeing a lot higher rate, especially in our northern part of Minnesota, more people are getting Alzheimer's disease because they had Lyme's disease first. Yes? So how long do you have to have Lyme's disease before you have that connection? I mean, if you catch it in the first two months or three months. Two, three months, you're okay. Um, I have a gentleman who actually had Lyme's disease. They didn't catch it for three years. And within his fifth year, he had Alzheimer's disease full blown. So, any other questions? Yes. We have a daughter that's 56 and she has MS, but she's also in the last few months been diagnosed with dementia. Yes. But she doesn't fit into any of the categories that you have put up there. I mean, she doesn't, I mean, we know she has dementia because she's been diagnosed, but I can't see where she's in any of those. Uh, there's 80 to 90, but if you want to meet with me, I would gladly talk to you and can give you and see where she fits, that we can work together. Because, yeah, MS, higher chance once you're diagnosed with MS. Or she has some of the symptoms, but she doesn't... You, some people may not ever have all the symptoms for vascular or all of them for Lewy body. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. My mother was in for 11 years. Alzheimer's. Okay. <clears throat> One of the symptoms at the beginning was she was very paranoid. She'd call us up at 2.30 in the morning and say, somebody stole all my money or yep. can you come right now, you know. Yep. And then when she was in quite a while, if they didn't give her her meds, she got combat, you know. She, yep. Doctor was operating on her and she said, you hurt me and I'll hurt you. And she had her fist all bubbled up and the rest of it, so. Yeah. But she lasted 11 years. So. Yeah, it, it is amazing. Um, how long they can last depending upon what's going on. So we're going to talk about early warning signs. What to be looking for. Memory loss for recent new information. This is where people are repeating stories over and over. I have a woman who told me the same story in eight hours 48 times. Big sign, right? They may forget appointments or keep calling the doctor's office saying, hey, when do I need to be there? Calling the bank, when's my appointment? When do I get to sign papers? They'll have difficulty recalling events, who they talk to. And they may have difficulty remembering to take their medications. If I don't feel good, what am I gonna do? Take more medications. And all of a sudden the pharmacy says, I can't give you any more meds, you had your supply. But they keep taking meds because they don't remember. Difficulty performing familiar tasks. They may neglect or forget how to perform routines. Cooking. They didn't boil the water first. They may not put soap in the laundry. They may put bleach in instead. They may hoard food and other items. They may neglect or overfeed a pet and all of a sudden the pet is gone. They'll neglect housekeeping. So food will spoil. The house is starting to get cluttered, dirty, and they'll start using other things, blowing up a blender, for example. The lawnmower is always breaking. Any questions on these? Next one is problems with word finding. They have trouble finding the right word or respond inappropriately. And then when they're caught saying something inappropriately that they, doesn't work with the, the conversation, they'll say, well, that's what I meant. You know I said that. You took it the wrong way. I didn't mean that. They may have trouble keeping up with the conversation, so they're silent, too. And having problems reading or spelling. 
Some of those words they don't comprehend. They get confused about time or place, so they don't remember always what day of the week it is, month, season. It can be raining in July, and my people think it is snowing. They may get lost while driving home. They drive to Coburn's. All of a sudden, there's an ambulance up there, and they can't turn left like they always do, and they can't remember how to get home. They may get lost walking in their own neighborhood or confused on where to go or how they got there. In a store, often when people move stuff around in a store, they can't find their way. Any questions on that? Worsening judgment, they may become vulnerable to scams. People calling them, saying, oh my God, your grandson's in the jail. I need you to send some money, and they will. They may have difficulty making judgments about their safety. They may write overdrafts on their checks, forget to pay the electricity and the power's out. Um, choose inappropriate clothing for the weather. They may be wearing shorts and it's 20 below. And they may have problems making decisions um, without any regard to consequences. These are often the people that you'll see at the stop sign and they're not stopping. They go like this and keep going before they step on the brake and then they step on the brake in the middle of the intersection. Um, I tend, I like to watch and if you sit up by Coburn's and Little Falls and you just kind of watch that intersection, You'll kind of see who does that. Even kids do that, do they not? Yeah. Um, they have problems reasoning and solving problems, paying bills, balancing their checkbook. They'll give away a large sum of money to people and then not remember and say, you stole my money. They may withdraw large sums of money from the bank and then lose it and tell the bank, you didn't give me my money. I didn't take it out. And spend large amount of money on items they already have or don't need. I had a grandmother who had 28 blenders. She liked those blenders and she blew them up. You know, she's afraid she's going to do it again. They misplace things or put things in odd places. Money hidden in the ductwork. Money hidden in the couch cushions. All of a sudden their dentures are in the microwave. All kinds of places. I have found things. I had a lady put a slit in the mattress pad or in the mattress and put her dentures in there, all kinds of things she wanted to keep. Then she sewed it with her thread and needle. <laughs> Hard to find. They may put things in unusual places, jewelry in the sugar bowl, dirty cup in the dresser drawers. Pretty normal for that, for having dementia. Changes in mood or behavior become more aggressive or more passive. Um, depends on who they were. They may be suspicious, fearful, or paranoid and have inappropriate responses to things. They may laugh at a funeral. They may start swearing at church. They may exhibit bizarre behaviors that they've never shown or do embarrassing things out in public where the children get embarrassed. Change in typical personality, they may stop bathing and grooming or doing dental care. They may wear the same clothes for days, even if it's soiled. They lose their initiation so they don't, can't come up with ideas to entertain themselves. You say I like to read books, I don't know how to get that started, I don't even know where to find a book in the house may become very unmotivated and unwilling to do things. They just stare and watch TV because all I have to do is push a button. It's easier than doing my old hobbies. And I may have no desire to be with other people or do hobbies. I won't plan. I don't want to go anywhere. No vacations. I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to go see the kids. They can come to our house. And they may sleep more than usual. Any questions on these? Will they have all these steps? No. Is there a chance they'll have some? Yes. Everybody has a different journey, but there's a high chance you will see some of these. Okay? Doesn't everybody get forgetful about different things <laughs> as you get older? There's a difference between for forgetful and not being able to check back. So if 
you've ever been at a store, I use Walmart because my brother worked at Walmart. You go to Walmart, you walk outside, how many of you have gone, oh crap, where's the car? <laughs> we all have done that. That's pretty normal. The thing is, what's not normal is when you can't find your car and you start walking to Coburn's to go look for it. Oh. <laughs> and that does happen. If I lose my house keys, if I sit down and think about it, the last time I had them, I can retrace my steps. That's normal part of aging. What's not normal is you can't retrace your steps. You don't even remember that you have a car or keys. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Yes. What do you think about the book, 36 Hour Day? I love the book. When his mother was in, was Alzheimer's, we read that and we've given it to many people. That I love that book. I think it's very, very important. I also think education is very important. 36 Hour, 36 hour Day, it's a very, very good book. Um, I'm a big believer. Um, we have a wonderful facilities, but I'm not a push of our facilities as much as I am in education. Throwing a video in front of somebody and say, now you can take care of my loved one, doesn't work. I want people really educated about dementia because the last thing I want is some 16-year-old watching a video then saying, okay, now I can take care of dementia. They need to be educated. They really do. It's okay. It's a great book. It's a great book. For anybody to Absolutely. You, might need it in the future you never know. So we're going to do an exercise. I need all of you to close your eyes. Take a deep breath. I'm not coming to touch you. Imagine... You are driving your car, so put your hands on your steering wheel. It is winter. The roads are black ice. Snow is blowing, and it's 11 o'clock at night. The snow is quickly covering your windshield, and your wipers have quit working. There is heavy traffic, very little space between cars, lots of murdering traffic, and the horns are honking. Because of this, you must drive faster and you don't want to. Hold on tight. You have a young, screaming, sick, ch sick child in the back seat screaming for you to come back there and hold her. In your side view mirror, you see an 18-wheeler about to pass you very closely while you see brake lights shining in front of you. You hear what appears as crashing metal and squealing tires all around you. What are you going to do? Open your eyes. How many of you are feeling a little panicked that that would be awful? That would be scary. I turn the key off. You'd turn the key off and you'd be stuck in the middle of 494. I'm not going to hurt anybody. I'm just sitting there. And they'll hit you. They'll hit you. What did you want to do? You wanted to stop the car. How many of you wanted to open your eyes and go, no, no, this isn't for me? <laughs> this is what dementia is like. All these things are coming at them. They don't know all the time what they're hearing. They don't know what's going on around them and being able to process and not knowing when to stop. So how can we have some prevention of forms of dementia? We're going to talk a little bit about that now. Because none of us want dementia. That's the last thing we want. So the first one is to love your brain is to catch some Z's. How many of you have a bedtime routine? Okay. How many of you have it written down so your family knows? <laughs> I want you to think about that. Because if you got dementia tomorrow and couldn't tell me your normal routine, does your family know you like the pink slippers instead of the blue ones? Do they know that you can't sleep with socks on? Do they know what side of bed you hop in? Do they know you always watch Chicago Fire on Thursday nights before you go to bed? Do they know you brush your teeth with warm water and not cold water? That is a big one, is to let people know your routine. I am 43 and my husband has a long list. Now he knows he can't move me anywhere. But we don't change our routine, do we? How many of us, that routine is pretty important? Every day, same routine. Please let other people know, okay? The next one is regular sleep schedule. 
How many of you go to bed at a time and get up every day at the same time? How many of you cheat and it's Saturday and I'm going to sleep in? Oh, yeah. yeah, and does that throw your body out of whack? It does. Keeping a regular schedule is actually better for you. Okay? The next one is treating sleep disorders. Anybody have sleep apnea or have issues sleeping, you need to take care of it. That puts stress on your brain and actually can lead to dementia. Take care of those issues, okay? Don't eat or exercise two to three hours before bed. That gets your brain active again. Your brain needs to relax. When you sleep is your quiet time. And get seven to nine hours is what they recommend. Seven to nine hours. Any questions on this? Okay. Then you need to break a sweat. You need to exercise. Moderate, 30 minutes, three to five times a day. How many of you, when you're sitting in the chair, just lift your leg a little bit? That's actually good. It's good for you. In the morning, just doing this. You know, they think I'm coming down the hallway to punch somebody. I'm just stretching. Those are good stretches. Just stretching your body is important because it gets that heart flow. And what do we need with that blood flow? The brain needs that blood flow too, so keeping everything going. Dancing, square dancing, going to the senior center, doing bone builders and things like that are huge. Also preserving space for your memory. The more you exercise, do you know that your brain has more space to hold your memories? Yeah, proven study. The more you exercise, the more room your brain has for memory. Ah, now everybody's going to be exercising. I know it. <laughs> Next one is fueling up. Right now, the big study out there is the diet that works the best to help prevent some of those dementias is the Mediterranean diet. Eating a lot of fish, chicken, and turkey. Fruits and vegetables. Nuts like pecans are good. Oops, sorry. Making sure you can even have glasses of wine, one to two. Water is important for you. Stay hydrated. Watching those oils, processed foods. Any questions on that? A lot of studies out there. Blueberries are supposed to be wonderful for you too. You got a comment? Okay. How about green tea? Green tea, they've actually said is good but there is more proven facts that the Mediterranean diet is better. So. What do you drink on that diet? On that diet, a lot of water. You can drink your wine and your milk, but they really push the water. Water and wine. Or coffee. Coffee, they do not encourage. <laughs> now I've seen studies they do, but the Alzheimer's Society, they do not. I think everything in moderation is what's important. It's moderation. Um, the next one that I want to talk to you about is taking care of your mental health. Stress causes harm to your brain. It causes fatigue. It causes brain overload. It disturbs your sleep, your concentration. You get anxiety and depression. How many of you have pets? It's one of the number one things that they're saying right now is to have some kind of pet, even if it's a fish and you talk to it. Okay. The other one is humor. Humor. How many of you laugh every day? How many of you force yourself even to laugh every day? Yeah, you have to. You absolutely have to. To humor makes your brain cells grow. Th then you've got a good laugh, don't you? Um, my mother laughs at me, but I, I tend to, you have days where you get in a humdrum and you have to have some laughter. So I tend to put a wedding veil, if you know me, I live in Little Falls and I'm driving through town on a Tuesday morning with a wedding veil here to work. Does it change the community in Little Falls if I'm at the stoplight wearing a wedding veil on a Tuesday? Everybody looks at me, I'm like, yes, that was worth the chuckle. Now I can go to work. 
it changes the day. Put a gorilla mask on and walk into Colburn's. You're going to change the day. You have some humor. Um, relaxing activities. When I had you close your eyes, that was meditation. How many of you meditate in a day and really just relax and let your brain go blank? That's very important. Very, very, very important. The other thing is massage. So, do you have a partner next to you? I just want to show you something. Christine, will you come up here? I want to show you a little massage here. It's very important to give massages or get massages, but right here is the area you need to use. Okay? I'm going to turn Christine here, and I need you to do circles. You can try this on your partner next to you if you want to, but I will tell you they will relax. By using this part of your hand, it actually stimulates the brain to go to sleep for a while, and you will feel their body just starting to go. But use this right here in circles, okay? Any questions on that? Okay. The next one is chronic illnesses. You need to quit your smoking. Monitor your weight. Weight is a big issue. Blood sugars and blood pressure. Make sure you're monitoring those because, again, that affects the blood level, right? Be social. Volunteer. The more you're with other people, the less stress you have about being part of a community and having purpose. It's supposed to be that way. I would hope so. Build social friend groups. How many of you have social friend groups? Get-togethers, yeah. And being part of community groups. Loneliness and depression can impair cognitive health. That if you are lonely and depressed without being treated for three years, you have a very high chance of getting dementia. Okay? Wear your seatbelt. Take driving class refreshers because a head injury, can that cause dementia? Absolutely. Keep your brain fed. So we're going to talk about this. This is my big one. Changing your routine. How many of you get dressed the same way every day, top to bottom, or bottom to top, or your half dressers, you put a shirt on, go get a sip of coffee, finish up? What's going to happen if you start getting a form of dementia and or you have a stroke, can't use your left arm? Would you be able to do it anymore? Change your routines, folks. You have to change your pattern. I always go get mail in the office here, the same hallway. I change it all day long because am I going to know where the mail is if I get dementia? No. Same thing at home. I get dressed bottom to top in the morning. At nighttime, I get undressed top to bottom. And then I switch it the next day because we have to retrain our brain. We're not using all parts of our brain if we get a habit. Next is computer games. Any of you play computer games? I will tell you Brain HQ is out there. It's free. It is very, very good. It gives you different kinds of brain games for you every day. So you might have a math one today, a social studies one tomorrow about maps. But it's starting to use all your brain, and it will tell you, you can get a printout of what part of the brain you didn't use for the month. How your brain is working on this part compared to this. Um, try new things, a bucket list. Any of you have a bucket list? Are you doing it? Good. We need to have a bucket list of something to look forward to. When people look forward to things, are they lonely and depressed? No. Can I ask you, what, what do you think of luminosity? Do you ever play that on the computer? Yes. It's a great one. Oh, what is it? Um, luminosity. luminosity. Hobbies, music, writing, journaling, and brain games. I gave you some brain games today. The verb generator. Things a nurse does. What does a nurse do? What are some verbs? Blood pressure? It can be as simple as aiding. That helps you find words in your vocabulary. Another one I gave you is change the first letter. Change a postal item to an Irish, jaw, Irish dog. What is that? Letter setter. Oh, you guys are good. How about change strength to late evening? Might night. Good job. 
The other one I gave you is wacky words. It says, all map, the number one. What do you think it is? All over the map. How about number seven? Scrambled eggs. Look at you guys are good. Number three is heads up. Heads up. Brain games are good. Most of us, do we do math every day? Some of us do not. Counting stairs, counting cars as you're driving. Anything to get use those different areas in your brain you normally don't use. Any questions for me? What's number four? Number four on wacky words? Yes. Number four is wide turn. I, I'm going to give you the answers. Are you ready? Okay. All over the map, call to mind, heads up, wide turn, rewrite history, shelter in place, scrambled eggs, a bend in the road, chow down, go for broke, high on the hog, it's a small world. So question, do you guys like these brain games that I, I print them for Dine and Discover all the time? You guys would like them? Okay, yeah. I get these um, part of my activity thing. Dot to dots are good. Drawing, coloring are great. So I'll have things every month when you guys come. I'll have them sitting back there so you can grab them if you want. Any other questions for me? Yes. Another place. Oh, Brain Awareness Week <clears throat> out of Washington. And he said they have lots of stuff, too. You can go on the computer, on the computer stand? Yep. yep, on the computer. Brain Awareness. Just Google it. It'll pop up. Any other things? If you're looking for more training, I am doing a training this Tuesday. Um, that class is going to talk about early stage dementia. What happens after you get the diagnosis? It's from one to three here. And then if you want a really in-depth class, um, I do a classes. The next one is March 13th. It's a Tuesday. It's an eight-hour training here on all the dementias and behaviors and communication tips and those kinds of things. Any other questions for me? Yes. Yes. So fill that space. Nothing. That Nothing. It just shrinks, and so there it is sitting inside your head. Hollow. Yeah. Not, no, not hollow. Three pounds to one pound, and that's Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. So, and if you think about medications that we give people for anxiety, we don't know what part of the brain is left on those folks, what's been eaten away by this dementia. So oftentimes, these meds aren't working. We're giving them all kinds of meds and upping the dose because it's not working, but that part of the brain may not be there. Yes? Should they do more than one brain scan when you first get diagnosed? You know, like my husband, they did one scan and they never did nothing else or after that. I, I believe I would, but the only reason they're not, insurance companies don't want to pay for it, is because it doesn't matter. They're not going to do anything for the dementia anyway. It doesn't do any good. Yeah, they'll just stop and go, okay, we know he has it because there's no cure. I would rather see it simply because, okay, I really know now this has gotten worse. I'm at this stage. Well, why don't they tell you that? They never said anything. You get the scan said there was, but never said we went to another one. I don't know. I know a lot of the insurance companies are really fighting they don't want to because it doesn't matter. <coughs> Same thing with doctors. I've seen you, I've given you a diagnosis, there's no cure. Till they get it, then they'll have lots of x-rays. Till they get it, they'll have lots of x-rays and do lots of things. Anything else for me? Do you know what the drug dimethazone does? I'm not a big one on the drugs. I know what they do. I just know it masks symptoms. So any like Demenda, those kinds of things that are out there right now, they're providing for people that are early onset folks, no matter what kind of dementia. The only issue with that is it masks your symptoms. So it doesn't cure it. You still got the diagnosis and it's going to keep progressing. 
all it shows is, oh, mom's memory is good today. Yeah, but the dementia is still growing. It's still going. It's just masking that symptoms. And when you take it off, then you see a major, oh my God, mom's so much worse. Well, she's worse because you didn't see those symptoms as you went along. It's harder to tell what stage they're at with masking those symptoms. Anything else? Yes? Is there a difference then between dementia and Alzheimer's? Yes. Oh. Dementia is symptoms. Alzheimer's is a form of those symptoms. So dementia is just, if the doctor says you have dementia, he's just saying, yes, you have a group of symptoms. Alzheimer's disease is a form of dementia. It's kind of like that's the disease. You would rather have a diagnosis of Alzheimer's and be able to understand it than to have a diagnosis of dementia because all that is is symptoms. Kind of like if you think of chicken pox. When you have chicken pox, what does the doctor ask when you go in? Do you itch? Spots, fever, all that. And when you have all those things and they look at the dots, they go, oh, yeah, chicken pox. And you get better because they give you some cream or it has to run its course. With dementia, they'll ask you those questions and say, oh, you have dementia, but that's as far as they go. With Alzheimer's disease, they're saying you have memory issues, you are either early onset, late onset, you can't remember things, you're more impulsive, um, it's going to travel your whole brain. Dementia is just a group of symptoms. 80 to 90 different kinds of dementias there are. And Alzheimer's is one of those. Right. That's a form. It's a form of it. Does that make sense? But yet you see in the newspaper and everything, everybody says it's the same thing. Dementia is just a group of symptoms. Then you've got Alzheimer's and vascular and all those things. Dementia is just saying you have a group of symptoms. That's all it is. It's brain failure. Alzheimer's disease is you have this kind of dementia and it's traveling the whole brain. Does that make sense? So you always start out with dementia and then it can progress? Nope. Dementia is just your symptoms. And then most of the time people will stop there. Their family doctor says, this is it. Or they may diagnose, not always, because they're not very good at that. But then you go to a neurologist. And a neurologist may say, you know what, I'm really thinking you have Alzheimer's disease or Lewy body or you have a mixture. But yeah, it, the, they'll usually start out, the doctor will just diagnose you with dementia. Dementia or dementia with behavior disturbances, if you're taking off your clothes in public or whatever. But Dementia is what you're going to get for a diagnosis, usually. Right. You want it broken down because it does matter because each one is different. Does that make sense? Yeah, it has to be different, but to me, the symptoms always seem so much the same. Yeah, dementia, though, if you think, not all dementias are memory related. What did I tell you with frontal temporal? Frontal temporal, you're going to see more of the speaking, the saying swear words then you are with Alzheimer's disease, you don't remember what you had for lunch. But Lewy body, they'll forget your name, but they remember what they had for lunch today. But yet they're all dementia. So it's just a group of symptoms.